Hello everyone, welcome back to Fukushima. Um, er, no, sorry. Welcome back to the Banner Sega. We're in Sigurholm. I was confused there for a little minute. Um, we've just arrived in Sigurholm, which is, of course, underwater. Juno is nowhere to be found, unfortunately, and Avend is absolutely shitting his pants in desperation. So I think, oh my god, our entire caravan is actually really, really distraught. You can see all these people are not pleased to be alive, really. Well... Anyway, you know, let's talk to Avon and see what is on his mind, and then we can go market map, blah, blah, blah. You're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Oh, Juno. Worry doesn't begin to describe it. Worry doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here, or something has happened to her. Are you sure what you saw was real? It could have been a dream, or I don't know. You were pretty exhausted. I, I, I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Um, don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. What's it like to be a mender? My god, apparently right now is the perfect time to pick Avon's brain, pick, pick, about what his life is about. Um, I thought there would, you know, there would be a little bit of, uh, urgency to our mission to find Juno, but apparently not. Um, and you know what, I just kind of noticed that his staff just kind of looks like a hockey stick. That's probably because... Uh, I'm stereotypically Canadian, apparently. He's he's rocking a massive hockey stick. We got Wayne Gretzky here, apparently, and, and in actual fact, some would call him a mender. Uh, because he weaves magic or something? I don't know. Um, anyway, you know what? Let's, uh, let's actually see what's going on with Avon right now. One, what's it like to be a mender? Being a mender? I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me. They knew very young that I would join the Order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father, both menders. The guild is for lots of people now. Builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? No, no, that's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know Juno. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this. So we don't end up scaring people. Um, how exactly does weaving work anyway? Weaving your magic. Do you just kind of like wave your fingers around? And then... Shit happens. Um, oh shit. Sorry. Why is Bellower following us? I screwed that up. I saw Grafheim as it burned. Avon gets a far away look in his eyes. Oh my god. He gives us the thousand yard stare. <laughs> the Sundir blew through it like a tempest. The Varl fell in thousands. Most of the Sundir left the city and headed south. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to, or heading toward Arborang. Bellower stayed in Grafheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Einertoft, I thought he must want to wipe the Varl off the map completely. But then he came after us. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Raze. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. Okay, how exactly does weaving work anyway? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Oh my goodness, this is getting... Complex. You're seeing threads, is that what you're saying? Everything is part of the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. We're getting into Matrix territory here. Avon is apparently going to be the one, and he is he sees everything, and he's just able to pull it all together and bend it to his own whim. Um, everything is part of the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. You mean uh, the hockey stick? Le hockey sticke? Some menders carve intricate patterns in the wood to help them remember the shapes of... Or, like I said, hard to explain. Okay, so you weave the threads into certain shapes and that causes spells, perhaps? Who knows? Do you think this is the end times? I... <laughs> I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent said a darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long that will take, or what it means, even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The Menders are in Arboring. If we can find ships and make it to the capital, we might have a chance. Um, okay. I won't take any more of your time. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spend all day worrying about serpents or Sundir. I think a lot of people are intimidated, or scared maybe, of, of me. Don't worry, it's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you're right, that is kind of uh, depressing, to be honest. Um, okay, so we've talked to Avon. Apparently he's in no rush to find Juno. 
Uh, you think he would have been from last episode, but no, he's just kind of like, meh. Um, what we'll do before we leave is check the market for supplies. Oh, yes. Okay, so one renown gets three supplies, unfortunately, which means we can buy six days worth of supplies. I think I'm going to reduce my renown to ten. Actually, no. Let's take a look at our party, see who and who we cannot promote, and then blow the rest on supplies. Um, so, Krumir has left our party and then once again has joined it, so he is no longer in our lineup. But boom, there he is. He is now, once again, in our lineup. Um, here's the silver brooch that we got from the baby dredge, I think. Uh, here's those gloves that Krumir brought. Dundir's hand. Which gives plus three strength, my goodness. That is not bad at all. I don't know what Krumir's current item is. Um, and once again, I've forgotten how to check. Uh, we can promote Krumir, apparently, though, uh, which is nice. Oh my goodness, I completely forget how... Oh, duh. I'm so dumb. Every single episode I forget. Okay, Krumir has the world hook, which... Uh, increases his armor break, but I think I'm going to give him uh, the strength increase. So he has a total of 16 strength. And once I promote him for 10 renown, which is more than enough, I would say, uh, we can give him even more. So we'll give him uh, an additional point of strength, which will increase his strength to 17 uh, when we give him that new item. And then uh, we'll increase his exertion. No, you know what? Let's. Um, uh, how do I remove a point? Okay, I have to cancel. Um, let's give him a strength point and a willpower point. There we go. Wonderful. Now, um, to remove the item, there I go. Now I give him the gloves. Oh, shit. I just noticed <laughs> that the gloves are level 5, and I'm quite embarrassed. But, um, we can give him this, uh, this brooch once strength deflected. But who would that be? That may be better for Rook, uh, perhaps, because he's a, he's a little fragile. Um, hard to say though, yeah, okay, let's give uh, this brooch to Rook, give the world hook back to Krumir, what is this, 15% strength, dodge, or dodge strength attacks, my mistake, we can give that to Jill, uh, apparently, um, I think we can probably give Jill the aggro drawing items. Unfortunately, he is not a high enough level. Even the Velka thread would be good for Jill because he's just an absolute tank. Um, yeah, I, I, I think our items are pretty much fine for now. Let's just leave it as is and get back to the market, buy some supplies, hit the road again, unfortunately. At the very least, um, oh shit, I didn't realize there was more items. Um, but that's okay because they all kind of suck. This patterned undercoat is just like a regular jacket. <laughs> Plus one armor. Tortoise band gives two armor on rest. We never rest. So that's not bad. Okay, let's just blow the remainder of our renown on supplies. Blammo. Nine days worth of supplies. That doesn't seem like a whole lot. Um, check the map, I guess. I really don't know where we're going to head next. There has been no mention of it from anyone. Um... Maybe we can head to Borsgard or Reynovik. We'll probably pass Reynovik, which started out as battlefields in the First Great War. Reynovik transformed. Um, I think I read this, actually. My mistake. Anyway, um, we're probably going to head to Borsgard. I don't know. I guess we'll find out once we leave, which we will do um, any fucking second now. Here we go. Let us leave. Rook, wait. Please, Avon begs. She said she'd be here. We need her. You can tell he's terrified of leaving, as though he'd be giving up on Judo. Um, okay, my mistake. Let's rest for a day, recover our morale, and let Juno uh, catch up to us, perhaps. Or maybe she's somewhere, like, in the basement, just not realizing that we've arrived. Just, I don't know, playing a harp or something. You tell Avon you'll stick it out a little longer, but you're not certain how long you're willing to wait yourself. Every day loss becomes more precarious. So let's, uh, rest for a day. A scuffle has broken out in front of the houses. Thief! shouts one of your people as a group of strangers flee from your camp. Oddleaf is already running in their direction. They took our supplies, you hear from nearby. Jesus. Just steal from the fucking merchant. Why would you hose me like that? I bought shit from the merchant. And then you watched me take it to my caravan, and then you stole it. Why not just steal from the fucking... Ah. 
Okay, let's <laughs> um, try to talk it out with the locals. Let's let's see what see. Oh, it's only negative five supplies. That's not bad. You wander onto a beach where some men have been waiting for you. Some terse words are exchanged about, about whether anything had been stolen or not. You don't see who draws the first weapon, but it stops the conversation cold. Okay, so apparently we are going to hop into combat here. Unfortunately, we're going to have to slay some fools just to uh, get our supplies back, perhaps? I don't know. So here's our battlefield. Um, it's just a couple... couple... Uh, Brigands, I would say. Um, oh, that's not our unit. Let's put Jill right up next to that chick. <laughs> we'll put Nid and Alette uh, behind our own lines, uh, like so. And then Krumir, of course, can bring the flank into order. There we go. Um, actually, yeah, that's not bad. Let's just do that. Okay. Rook is going to immediately try to knock out this archer. He's going to attack the Fuck. Uh, he's actually got Marked Prey, and we can use that to get, um, I think that will get, uh, what's his name? Krumir to attack as well. Marked Prey. Uh, does two armor damage, and all allies attack. Okay, let's try that. Blammo. Two willpower points, and Krumir, oh my goodness, that was effective. He just knocked the shit out of that woman quite easily without a single issue. Because Krumir has a massive amount of strength, that's what it is. Um... Alette can't actually hit anyone from where she is, so she's going to have to move next to Ivor or Ying... Oh my god, we can't actually hit anyone from here either. Whoops, I guess we'll just end her turn and hope things turn out for the best. What is on the ground? Is that leaves? Is there been a massive Ipecac festival and everyone's just been vomiting all over the place? Because that's kind of what it looks like. It's actually quite a picturesque little, uh, little battlefield. Um, Ivor is going to jam himself in between these two men here, which sounds really fucking weird, but it's it's not, I assure you. He's going to do a battering ram move on this guy and knock him back with his fucking head. There we go. Three armor break <laughs> in a fucking headbutt. And now uh, he can take care of whoever... Ne oh my goodness. Fucking Rook just resisted that attack. That was wonderful. My god. I didn't realize that uh, he was that badass, but there you go. I guess it's the new item he has. He was able to resist uh, one strength damage. Um, they're beginning to pile on the Rook, unfortunately, but Nid can take care of this asshole. She's going to do two armor break, and then Ivor can retaliate if need be. Um, the buddy we just headbutted has formed a shield wall with his uh, good friend. Quite weirdly, I gotta say, it's a little unorthodox, but whatever, I'm not one to judge. Uh, we've broken um, a bunch of armor off that guy, and now Ivor has been surrounded. Uh, we'll use Rook to weaken this man now. He can do like six or seven uh, strength damage, there we go. Krumir can now take care of that guy. No problem. Uh, pretty much by himself, I would say. Alette is going to continue this... Uh, armor break situation whilst Ivor continues to get pounded upon by uh, the massive group of men he is in between. Once again, sounds weird, but I assure you it is completely 100% innocent. Um, oh my god, Ivor's armor is just crumbling turn by turn. Um, we'll have to do a bit more strength damage to this archer and oh my god, we got a thrash move being unleashed on us right here. Uh, Nid is going to move to take care of these guys. Uh, she's going to do a bunch of armor break to this guy. I think Krumir is going to have to actually move next turn, and Rook can then take care of this guy. Oh my goodness. Okay, Krumir is going to pretty much annihilate uh, these guys right now. He's going to do five strength damage to this guy, and pretty much uh, neuter his ability to destroy us. We're going to knock this guy out immediately, and then Rook can fire into the fray. Another fucking thrash move. Unbelievable. Uh, let's see, what can Alette do? She can move, and then fire at all of these assholes, and actually knock this guy out. We'll do it, and then uh, we'll get Alette to do her best here. Uh, I think Ivor's gone. Yeah, there he goes. Nine damage from this fucking archer. My goodness. Um, and then Krumir is pretty much on his own. <laughs> 
This guy keeps forming a shield wall to, like, very little effect. I don't know what it's about. Um, we'll do a bit of armor break to this guy, make it easy on us, and then Jill's gonna have to move up. Krumir could potentially take Ivor's place, um, if need be, but I'm sure, you know, let's just cut through this guy and then move on to the next. Oh, he's resisted the damage, unfortunately. Oh, now Nid's getting... Jesus. Nid is getting fucked up by uh, this asshole over here now. Um, unfortunately, I just realized that this guy, uh, his special ability has reduced all incoming damage. So it's pretty much worthless to try to attack him. Um, there goes Nid. She's dead. She's dead! And then we can get Alette to do six points of strength damage immediately. Um, then he's gonna go after Alette, of course, do the exact same thing. Well, thrash move, not too bad, I suppose. Jill's gonna rush to her aid, of course, as he always does. He's like, lovers in a dangerous time, I gotta tell you. Now, Krumir is gonna enter pillage mode and do his damnedest uh, to break this guy's armor down. Because, as we all know, Krumir has a lot of armor break, but unfortunately, Buddy's ability allows him to resist pretty much everything that's coming his way. So, I mean, it's not the greatest, but uh, if we keep just throwing our... Oh my goodness, I thought that was Jill's move, but no, it's Alette's move, so she's going to do nothing, apparently. Jill is going to move into position, form a shield wall. Yeah, there's no point. I don't know why I bothered, but Alette's gonna... Oh, I thought Alette was gonna get knocked out there, but there we go. We finished the battle. We've slain a bunch of semi-innocent villagers. I mean, really, they were just trying to feed their families, and we just totally annihilated them for their thievery. I'm not proud, but what can I say? Um, there we go. The thieves scatter pretty quickly when you start laying into them, but when you return to the caravan, you discover why. Even more supplies have gone missing since you rushed out to fight. Oh! Our nine days of supplies have been reduced to five days. Fuck this place. Screw you, Avond. We're leaving. This is ridiculous. Avon looks out across the lake with a thousand mild stare. Again, he says nothing. We've got problems, says Ivor. The whole place is flooded. We could try to walk the muddy parts, but it'll be slow going. We could try to float the caravan over the lake, but we might tip or get stuck. Or we could just go around the whole thing, but no idea how long that'll take. What do you think? We can attempt to ford the river, cock the wagons and float across, pay some locals to help, detour around the flooding. Um... Oh my god. Let's... <laughs> cock the wagons and float across. This is gonna end in disaster, I just know it. You spent some time rigging the wagons to float on the water, sealing them with tree sap and whatever else you have on hand. The rest of the caravan finds anything they can to float on, small boats or makeshift rafts. Some swim. With a deep breath, you set off the bank. Here we go. You do your best to float the various ragtag groups of your caravan across the muddy lake towards Borsgard. I told you guys, Borsgard. Things quickly go bad between rafts pulling apart or people tipping into the murky water of the lake. Eventually you gather everyone up, but you've lost precious time and supplies to the bog. Of course! Negative 20 supplies. We're one day... One day of supplies. Every oh my god! We just spent all of our fucking renown. I should have bought supplies before we left. I didn't realize... I. I wasn't thinking. We could have got an additional day or two of supplies. Jesus. My god. Our caravan is depressed as all hell. People are dying left, right, and center. The sounds of a skirmish alert you to a varl surrounded by a half dozen armed fighters. One man spots you and shouts, Leave us to our business! This varl killed my father without reason. The varl is about to respond when a man attacks. The giant swats the blade aside and silently watches you for the next assault. Let us hear what the Varl has to say. The Varl shrugs as if unconcerned, saying, This one's father and I had a business deal. He lied. Now he's dead. Lies! shouts the man. You murdered him over a lie, you coward! The men wildly attack the Varl, who deflects them well enough, but you're uncertain of how long he can keep it up. Let us defend the Varl. Let's try to save this fucking guy. Ivor, you say. We could use any Varl with a good sword arm, couldn't we? He nods, readying his weapon. The men immediately back off, the prospect of fighting your entire army suddenly unappealing. They watch from a distance, shouting obscenities and something about injustice. The Varl turns toward you. Didn't need the help, but if I'm going to travel, it may as well be in the company of other Varl. He falls in line with the others and you return to travel. Okay, look at that, plus one Varl. Plus five renown as well. Wonderful, our morale has increased as well. 
which is certainly something. Um, our caravan decreases in size uh, over time. Uh, oh shit, I totally forgot. Onif is in our caravan and probably Ekel as well. I completely forgot. We have him um, prisoner still, I think, perhaps? Uh, I can't recall. Anyway, as you're about to head off to sleep for the night, Onif pulls you aside. I have a couple concerns I wanted to speak to you about, he says. In private, you find a quiet place to talk. Here we go, here we go. What's on your mind? How well do you know the people traveling with us? How many strangers are in the caravan now? Ugh. Oh. Is this about Echo? Let's just get straight to the point, my goodness. Um, the group decides, not just me. Don't fool yourself, Rook. It's mostly you. I've been watching folks since I joined you. Your companions from Skogir, they're loyal. I mean, it seems pretty clear that they died to protect you. I suppose I do the same. What about the Varl? You don't even know half those warriors. You're telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now? After everything that happened at Einertoft? They joined us voluntarily. I trust Ivor to handle it. If they're willing to fight, it's worth the risk. We could be more cautious. Uh, I trust Ivor to handle it. Seriously, if they don't follow me, they will most certainly follow Yingvar. If they don't follow Yingvar, they will most certainly follow Krumir, who will most likely follow Yingvar. So it's all good. I, it's all good. I trust Ivor to handle it. He's fearless, I'll give you that, but look at him. He's run ragged. He can't be there all the time. What happens the first time the Varl don't want to do what you tell them? If Krumir gave the word, I guarantee at least half would follow. Yeah, you're probably right. Let's be honest, they could take this caravan by force at any time if they wanted to. No, there's only, there's only like fucking 50 of them. And like nearly 500 men, I think. 500 humans, I should say. You may have a point, what do you suggest? I've got no trust. I've got no choice but to trust them. They haven't. What do you suggest? I suggest growing some balls instead of hoping it all works out, Rook. What an asshole. They're not the biggest problem, though. There's a mender with us. A mender who pulls lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. Myself, I think we lucked out when his mentor didn't show up in Sigurholm. Avon's just the apprentice? What in the depths is his master capable of? Think about it, Rook. What do you really know about Avon? I heard they were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dredge started showing up. Then an enormous serpent shows up at Einertoft after tearing the world in half, takes one look at Avent and bolts. Suddenly they need our help instead of the Mender Council. How does that make any damn sense? You make some valid points. Uh, you might be distorting what happened though, uh, a little bit. Avent could have taken control long before now. Um, you, yeah, he probably could have. A shrewd man with ambitions can be very patient. I'm grateful for what you've done to get us this far, Rook, but it's always been about trust. I think it's time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing personal. Suddenly you gasp for air. <gasps> when you look down, Onif is holding a knife Barry, What? What? Suddenly you gasp for air. When you look down, Onif is holding a knife buried deep in your ribs. So Onif has just stabbed us. Yep, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Your vision blurs and blood fills your sight. You gasp again. There's a bird whistle and the camp becomes a blur of motion. Onus fighters from Frostvalir leap into action, cutting people down. As Oddleaf turns to fire on them, Onif runs her through and pulls the blade from her back without even breaking his stride. She drops like a sack of flour. In one clean motion, his bleed... Oh my god! <laughs> in one clean motion, his blade then takes Edgel in the throat before the boy can grab his shield. Onif heads straight for Let, who freezes in unbridled terror. You rise to your feet through the pain. Edgel and Oddly are dead. Somehow you find the strength to cleave the nearest traitor in two, but you can't find the breath to shout. You think your lung might be punctured. Onif clutches Alette's wrist amidst the commotion, tosses her bow aside, and pulls her deep into the woods. Her eyes meet yours across the campsite. No, her lips say, though you can't hear the words. A dozen men appear between you as Ivor steps into view, as fearsome as you've ever seen him. This is so bad! This is the worst thing to have ever happened! My god! We gotta fucking get Avon involved in this shit, and Ganolf. Let's fucking rip through these assholes. <laughs> We've got to save our fucking daughter. I did not see this coming at all. My fucking god. Ugh. Okay, so let's put Avon in the rear and get Rook all over this. He's gonna run forward with feet. Well, he's pretty spry for having been stabbed in the ribs, I gotta say. He's gonna run forward with the fury of a thousand suns. 
And he's gonna shoot an arrow into the heart of these bitches. Why have so many people joined fucking Onif? I don't remember him having that big of a host when he joined, but apparently... Um, apparently he does. Who to thunk? We've just ate, uh, fucking headbutted a bitch through another bitch. And now, uh, Nid is going to try to shoot this man for two points of armor break. And then Krumir is, of course, of course, going to charge forward. Um, here he goes. He's gonna... Oh my god, we can actually knock this guy out with one deft blow. Let's do it. Blammo! There he goes. Krumir has so much fucking strength now. It's ridiculous. Um, Avend is going to actually do a lightning attack and shock all of these bitches. All of these assholes. I picked the wrong one. No! I meant to pick the other um, archer, archress, and unfortunately, I ruined it. That would have hit every single one of these assholes in the uh, in the group, but I messed it up big time. Um, Rook is going to uh, cleave his way through uh, this archer. I meant to go on the other side as well. Now Ivor is pretty much useless. Um, my bad, my bad. Perhaps he can go around. I don't know. Yes, he can. Yes. Yes. He's going to knock out this archer with one swing. Blammo. And then, of course, Gnolf is going to have to march on this dude on the, uh, the right flank here. Um, Nid's going to have to move forward to remain relevant. Uh, she can do a big sniping move and actually hit um, this guy here for a little bit of damage, perhaps. My goodness. Once we're out of this battle, I'm afraid we're going to have to end the episode. Uh, even if we don't recover a let, we're going to have to end because uh, we just don't have enough time. <laughs> Unfortunately, Krumir is going to knock out this archer and consolidate forward next turn. Um, my god. Ivor is just being annihilated, unfortunately. Uh, we can probably mend his armor with a bunch of willpower points. Here we go. He's got four armor out of that. But unfortunately, he's going to get hit by a thrash move, which is less than ideal, I've got to say. Not the greatest. Uh, Gunolf is going to try to deliver. Unfortunately, he has, like, no exertion and zero willpower points because we never use him. <laughs> so he's pretty much fucking useless. Rook is going to fight to the very last, i got to tell you that. To get his precious daughter back, he will uh, probably chew his own arm off if need be. Uh, not that that's ever going to come up, I would say, but you never know. Um, man, all these yellow cloaks uh, are pretty much destroying my force. It's got to be said. So I'm going to knock this woman out with Krumir. Blammo. There she goes. There goes my hair. Okay, you know what? We can actually... Um, we can do a lightning move on these guys without compromising our own men, which is great. So we will do that. Blam. Blam? Yeah, wonderful. Okay, there we go. Um, they've built a shield wall, which is not great for us, uh, but Krumir can take care of it. He's going to do a little bit more strength damage, one point. Um, when I said Krumir, I really meant Gunolf. Sorry, Gunolf, you orange bastard. <laughs> uh, Rook is going to cut his way through this man. Uh, well, no, he's going to try. We're going to leave him at one strength for now. Uh, slow down these enemies whilst we finish everyone off uh, with Nid and Avon, of course. Nid, eh, not really great. She can do some armor break on this guy. I wasted a uh, point of willpower, or did I? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Krumir is, of course, he can actually flank and destroy this guy here quite easily, so we will do that instead and then uh, move on, of course. There we go. Man, Krumir has so much renown. He's just finishing all of these guys, no problem. Um, can we do another Arc Lightning and knock this guy out? Yeah, let's do it. Blam! How does that feel? Bitch ass. <laughs> Fucking shot down in his prime by pretty much Thor. <laughs> this world's version of Thor. Um, that is a good point, though. If Avon can cast fucking lightning strikes, what can Juno do? Or anyone else on the Mender Council. What can they do? Boggles the mind. Um, this battle is pretty much over. Once it is over, like I said, we're probably going to have to end it here. And leave you guys with a massive cliffhanger. Um, Jill is dead. Oldleaf is dead. And Alette is potentially 
going to die, which is not... I'm very upset, I gotta say. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to lie down because this is so extreme. I'm actually feeling physically drained at the prospect of this whole situation. At the prospect of potentially getting my daughter killed. My god. Okay. Yeah, let's... This is this is a fine place to, to <laughs> fucking end it off. Ivor is screaming like a madman, tearing through bandits. Um, okay. Thank you everyone for watching. Shit has hit the fan in a major way. And next episode could be a tearjerker. I'm not gonna lie. I might actually weep on air. And... I just ask that you guys don't judge me too harshly for my, my soft ways. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next episode.